Hello everyone, this is Gary Marr from Wendell Community College. This screen captures from my SAS 121AB class, Command Line Operations, and this particular screen capture relates to Module 4 uh, in the course, which speaks specifically addresses the command line language and how it might be of assistance in working with networks or network connectivity. Um, now, I will caveat all this by saying that this machine is connected to an internet, so it's connected to one network, but it's not connected to any kind of local area network. And unfortunately, at school, I have limited privileges like the rest of you, so I cannot do some of these commands because I'm not going to get, uh, I don't have the privileges necessary to get any feedback or return the command. So what I'm going to do is talk about those particular commands, which I think are the most important for you to spend some time with. Um, for starters, three that I've used over time, and these kind of stick out in the list. And I will give you the disclaimer that I'm primarily a programmer. And so I don't get into the nitty gritties of networking as much as other folks, nor have I done that much in my career. But there's certain of these commands which I have gotten involved with in the course of debugging problems I've had with software installation or even getting a program to want run, maybe a client server program, for example, would be a place that I might use some of these commands to interrogate the system to get more information to help me find out um, where the problem might be. Ping, Tracer T, or Tracer R, Trace RT, when IP config, are three commands which I've used on a fairly frequent basis. Ping is a very useful command if you're trying to determine if you have connectivity to a remote internet site or remote server. Um, it's also useful if you're testing, for example, if you've made changes to your system and you want to make sure it can communicate over the network. By pinging a remote server or remote device, you can determine if you're seeing outside of your computer over a network. Tracer T or Trace RT is helpful sometimes in, in determining where um, a system's slow or where it's getting bogged down because it'll show you all the connections necessary as it routes itself through the internet to find the server that you're looking for. Uh, especially, especially valuable with the internet. Um, this is not a networking class, so I'm not going to go through all the gruesome details, nor would I probably be the best person to do so. But it will show you where, um, in the course of connecting to remote servers, where in fact there might be some bottlenecks. IP config is the last one. IP config is very valuable because there's going to be situations where you're working on a machine and someone's going to want to know what the IP address is. Um, the IP address is used by TCP IP to uniquely identify your machine to a network. And being able to know what that address is could be important for either setting up connectivity or trying to figure out why you can't get to something. So um, I would say those three right off the top are three that I've had to use over time. Now, in addition to that, I've come up with a list which I think pretty much straddles the commands that are most likely to be used uh, to de debug Internet problems or networking problems or to set something up on the Internet. Uh, I can't demonstrate all of these, though, because of some limitations that I have in my environment. But I would look all of these over. And then as I've done with other uh, modules, I've done it about, oh, I don't know, 8 to 12 of these, which these commands, which I think would be important to understand or do a little bit more research with. In association with that, I've created another text file. And again, this is just a text file. It's not a batch file. This can't be executed. It's also got an extension of TXT, which would be a hint that it can't be executed. But a lot of this syntax in it's going to look similar to what you would see either in a batch file or running from the command line. At the top of these files, I've listed the commands of which I'm going to address and then kind of break them down one by one in terms of, well, little things that might be helpful in understanding how to use them maybe some um, switches or some flags that I use when I've uh, executed these commands. I'm not going to try to go through all of these today, but I'm going to talk about all of them, at least at surface level, and you guys can experiment with them yourself, either using the command box or PowerShell. The first one is FTP, which stands for File Transfer Protocol. This is um, something which is built into the TCIP uh, stack and it basically allows you to upload or download files from another computer. So when I say FTP open domain name, what I'm doing is using the FTP command, the open, which is a kind of a subcommand of FTP, and then I'm going to identify a server or a domain name 
in which I'm trying to connect to. Once I've that, made that connection, I typically have to supply a user ID and password, and then using commands like put, I can upload or download, put and get, I can put, upload and download files to that remote server. Um, this is typically a lot easier done these days with a GUI application like FileZilla. I use FTP in all my classes, and we typically use FileZilla if a student is working on assignment at home and he wants to upload it, or maybe he had worked on it on campus and now wants to bring it down to his local PC. FileZilla um, supports the FTP protocol in a drag and drop GUI, so it's a lot easier than memorizing all the commands that are available with FTP. However, there are going to be situations where you might not have FileZilla available and you might have to uh, upload or download a file and providing you have the domain name or the name of that server, FTP server, uh, and you have the user ID and password to do so, you can bring field files up and down. As a technician in the field or if you're trying to debug a problem with the network, this is a very feasible or very, um, uh, very doable or very, uh, very much a thing you might run into uh, on your day-to-day -day support. So I list it. I'm not going to go through that one though. <clears throat> file type is simply a way of extracting file extensions. Um, this again is probably more easily done with File Manager in the Windows environment, but uh, sometimes you don't have File Manager available. Maybe all you can do is uh, get a listing of uh, files. It's an older machine, and one way to list files out by their extension, uh, bat files uh, for batch files or um, Excel files or executable files. You can actually pull their files by the extension using the ftype command. Again, a lot of these commands, FTP and ftype, really have been around for many years and were probably um, in use 10, 15 years before a GUI ever appeared that allowed them to be made easier for the user now by having a much slicker interface. These are old school commands that were designed to be run from the command line. The next one is uh, somewhat interesting. You're going to run a situation from time to time where you have to get the the MAC address of a particular device. And this is kind of getting very hardware, very techy. And what this does is every computer uniquely has an address it can be identified by. So for example, if I say get MAC, this one's gonna tell me what the physical address uh, of this particular device would be. This is something which um, probably is gonna be more in the security realm than it is in the support realm, but it is something that you're you know likely to run into. Either uh, someone might ask you to check this over the phone, uh, you might have to give it to someone, or you could be in a support position where the MAC address is important. The other one that I'm going to do right now, because I know it's coming up, is IP config. This one is used a lot because you're going to be <clears throat> out there in the field somewhere, and you're going to be you know, needing to access the Internet and, and maybe um, <clears throat> access to a particular server or, or a resource is is blocked by IP address so you have to give them your IP address to get in and again in the middle of this page here it's going to give you the IP address of the device both the four and the six uh, layer version so that you can pass it along to someone else to give yourself access into a particular server but uh, IP config is one I've had to use on various occasions over the years getting back to my list path ping and tracer RT essentially do the same thing. They're going to trace the path to a particular server. So let's do this. Let's do GCCs to see what comes up with that. And again, um, not being a tech support person, I don't do this an awful lot. I mean, this is something where if I was looking at the performance of a network, this might be something of great value to me. Uh, this is actually showing me right here how I'm connecting to the GCC website. And it's doing um, effectively pings, or it's touching different servers that is necessary for me to get to my resource. I happen to be in Portland, Oregon right now, which is why it's showing um, Beaverton and, and Troutsdale and places like that. The next one, our hit parade here is, let me go back to my list. Uh, is going to be system info. Again, this is another one that you're more likely to run into if you're a technician, I believe, and you're out there in the field 
trying to uh, get some information about the particular system you're working on, either because there's a known problem or there's an issue that you need to have to try to piece some information together and to try to debug what exactly is happening here. And again, System Infill's got all kinds of stuff running that's going to display, including everything from, you know, what processor I'm using to who made the processor and other information, which can be very valuable if I'm trying to debug or figure out why I've lost internet connectivity, or maybe I need to gain, gain connectivity to a particular resource. The last, <coughs> excuse me, the last one here is Telnet. Uh, this is another one that's going to be a little bit tricky for me to do because I have to be able to tell that into a resource that um, it has a user ID and password set up for me. <clears throat> I used to be able to do this with a GCC system, the Linux system, but they've since made it more secure, so I do not have the ability to get in there with Telnet. I did include a link that talks about this extensively. It's right below here on line 45, and I would recommend you taking a look at that if you want to find out more about Telnet. Back to my PowerPoints now. <clears throat> and I would say that in general, this is probably one of the shorter modules that I've put together. Um, all of these commands are extremely <clears throat> important and valuable. Um, a lot of them have been replaced by applications with GUI front ends to make them easier to use and make them more graphical in their displays. But if you're in a position where you have to support or administrate a network, you're likely to have use for some of these particular commands. And if you've been doing it for any amount of time, you probably have used them for some time. So I'm going to stop this lecture for now. You've got some assignments and some other works to do with this, including reflection uh, on how this module went. If you have any questions at all or any problems, let me know and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thank you.